So as you know, we love the BB that much. We've gone out and bought a second one um, to be used as a backup more than anything. And we're not sure whether you use it as like a jaw redundancy thing or just uh, if it goes down, quick whip one out of the box and swap it over. So this is my first look into how to set up a second BB as your backup. While that's booting up, I've noticed a few things. The, the original one I've had is um, well over a year old, pretty sturdy, been very, very reliable. The new model that's come out, or should I say the, the new perch one, um, there's cut a little corner or two on this one. Um, the nuts that hold on the sockets are all plastic on these later models, whereas the, the ones we uh, I've had for a while is the metal and one of the one or two of these is cracked. I think they've been over tightened and the, because they're plastic, they just snap. So I did want to play some of uh, metal ones. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. The power supply is also different. They're given as a uh, one with a nice BB sticker on there, but as uh, people in the UK I and mean, anyone in the US, you need to have a, an adapter on the back, a clumsy, uh, I wouldn't recommend that for gig use. I mean, look at it, it's gonna be knocked and banged out. The original um, uh, BB there. We've got a locking UK adapter and that's pretty sturdy, very reliable. Failing that, um, buy yourself a brand new USB-C power supply, which I would um, strongly recommend anyhow. Always good to have a backup power supply because I had a few reports of people with um, power supply issues. Okay, so um, that's our working, gigging, happy old uh, B-Beat. This one here, we're gonna just go in the menu here and go to the uh, options. And if we take a look, there is a sync mode on here. So when we go into sync mode, pop the wheel. We can set this as a main unit, which is sort of run alone. Expansion, which I think gives you the extra outputs in addition to your uh, primary B beat. We're gonna use this as a spare. So let's select that and hit save. And do a quick restart. Uh, by the way, these are both connected to the same network at home via Ethernet cables. Okay, so the message we popped up there, it's found the other BB on the network. Sync needed, this may take some time. Um, just before I made this video, I did a backup to USB stick for this device, just as a matter of um, course, before I started all this uh, messing about. Um, that took like two or three hours, it was ridiculously long. It's the sort of thing you want to set running and go and play your guitar, have a cup of coffee, or go away or something. Um, and if we just have a quick look in there, the amount of data I've got in there is 37% um, free. So 70 gigabytes free out of 112. So roughly about half, half the memory's been consumed. The version on there is 4.6.3. This one came, I've not updated yet, it's 4.6.4, so a little mod. Um, also notice the screen's a bit bluer on this one compared to the old one. I don't know if that's uh, perhaps the film on the screen, we'll find out when we, when we pull that bit off. So, sync needed, this may take some time, and it will overwrite the spare contents with the main data. So, we can see both devices uh, just jumped into sync mode there. That's synchronizing, and by the looks of that, this is copying all the data from the main unit over to the uh, the new, the secondary device. So I'm gonna leave that going. If the, the backup on the USB stick was anything to go by, this should take a few hours. Um, I'm gonna time it now and then report back once this is done. So this has been trying to uh, sync up for an hour now and the display has not changed uh, at all. I would assume that the uh, progress does change rather than updates at the end of the cycle, the uh, end of the process. Data is kind of uh, happening between. You can see there the, the network lights are flashing in tandem. So that kind of says to me that uh, some data transfer is going between the two. Um, being an hour, I'm not convinced. So I'm gonna pull the plug on this and, and try and do it again. Um, all the keypad is uh, disabled. I guess the only way to kind of come out is to probably uh, kill the power on the unit. So I'm gonna gonna do that. I'm just gonna flick it off at the uh, the main socket. Oh, there we go. Um, for the next attempt, what I'm gonna do is actually just uh, bypass my uh, home network and just go peer to peer. So one cable 
straight into the other BB. So hopefully, I mean, I can't make it, uh, expect there would be any, um, the extra network traffic would make any difference. Incidentally, um, the network was shown that both machines were getting gigabit speeds between them. But as we saw, nothing much was happening. So now we're just booting up network to network direct. Um, this may or might not work, so you're going to learn with me as we go along. So we boot it up. Let's go options and sync mode. Set this as a spare, save, quick restart. Secondary B beat. Just did a little search, must have found it okay. Yeah, so we're, uh, oh look, and we actually got some results, so we got 8% straight away. Now that could be the 8% that was transferred in the um, the first attempt. Um, or maybe it's some small files. If you see my other video where it, it uh, when we look at what's stored on the B-Beat backup, there's, uh, there's the data files, the media files, which is videos and images, and then you've got all the audio projects and each one of those is one of the five um, folders, plus there's some of the settings in there as well. So maybe that first one, uh, maybe it's a lot smaller, it's like data files. I seem to recall the fourth one out of the five is like the real big fat one, which probably has all the, uh, you know, the heavy files in it, videos, maybe some big audio projects. I so see the other video in my collection for that. So um, that looks like it's doing something a bit more interesting this time. We've got some... Uh, cursor moving across the uh, screen there which is a good result the progress bars going now so i'm going to leave that running now and pop back with an update in a short while and see how we're doing and how long it's taken so uh see you in a minute so we're back i've left this half an hour i thought it actually take longer but um when i came back this is what i found uh bb is ready they're both saying bb is ready so uh I'm guessing um, this one should contain the same same device. All right, so the second device, if you look, the, the controls have been nullified, whereas uh, BB1 is the master. And whatever I do on this one, it comes through on that one. So uh, if I want to load up my show, yeah, a bit like the, um, the prompter app. Whatever you do on one is mirrored on the other one. Except it's a one-way process. This one is does nothing. So uh, I can play that. Um, I can enter live mode. And yeah, they're, they're running in tandem. So that's cool. Um, but what if I want to, uh, if this one packs up, if this one goes off and I want to run that one as the main one. This one as we've seen is no. So I'm gonna do something quite drastic. I'm just gonna uh, pull the plug out of the primary B-Beat. And yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, our secondary B-Beat has now taken the role of the primary and we can uh, control it as the master unit. Let's just power up the primary B beats. We can imagine we've had a crash there or something's gone wrong. And let's see what happens. So they're still networked to each other just by the Ethernet cable. So um, I'm playing my set on my secondary B beat. B beat one's booting up. and they're still running independent. So perhaps as part of the boot process, it does a handshake to establish ranks, i.e. master and then slave. Let's just try that again. So if we go into the options, in fact, let's just, before we do that, 
Let's just repower up the secondary B beat and see what happens when it's set to master, sync, and network together. So, power up, B beat number two. Spare mode coming on the screen there. Searching for main beat. All right, it needs to sync. Okay. I wonder what will happen here. Hopefully it'll be quick. Hopefully it spots that they are. So yeah, that was great. So it's doing a quick check, make sure the data content's the same. And now we're back into master and slave mode again. That's pretty good. So that little, um, I guess every time if I do my uh, updates of my shows on the main B beat, have a sync. The initial sync might take a few seconds, depending on how much data it's got to be transferred. But it'll keep this one up to date as my spare. And uh, I suppose in a, in a practical situation, you'd run this as your master. And if it went down, you could, you'd have to probably switch the cables over or unplug and plug into there and let this one take over. Um, I wonder what happened if this went down first. Um, no one ever thinks about the backup going down. I think people expect the backup to be always working um, for when the primary dies, but you know there's a rare chance that the backup could be dead when you want to come and use it. And that goes for any piece of gear, you know, your spare cable, your spare guitar amp. Always test your backups to make sure they're as good of working on as your primary and uh, service them accordingly. So there we go, that's the first little um, play with master and sync mode. Um, if we pull the network cable out of our secondary B beat, yeah, we've uh, regained independent control, which is kind of what happened when the power went off on the, the primary one. If we stick back in the cabling, does it remain independent? Yeah, I think it remains independent until we uh, re reboot uh, on this one. So, in that case, you have to do a, a quick restart, and that will establish the uh, the sync between them as a uh, master and slave. Uh, every time we need to do, every time we have a connection, we got to do this um, little um, handshake, which if we can see. takes a couple of seconds at the most and now we've got um, master and slave slave following the master right that was pretty impressive that's my first venture into the world of uh, master and slave I would imagine uh, I would sync probably prior to going to the gig after I've done my setup at home keep this in the case and should there be a problem we can whip this one out uh, and get it up and running. As for running the dual redundancy, the cable thing, um, I don't know, obviously needs a, a bigger work top to cater for both units and uh, hoping that the need for the secondary one will be a rare occasion, but uh, good to be prepared and good to know that it automatically syncs across there. So uh, I've got a clone as the spare unit when I need it. Okay, again, that was a version four point can't get on it now. Yeah. This one was version 4.6.3. And this one is 4.6.4. .4. So there's a lot of compatibility between them there. Interestingly, this one um, says it's used 71 of 112 gigabytes, 37% used. And this one is 37% used, 70 of 112 gigabytes. Now, there could be some, uh, because I've used this one for a lot longer, there could be some... Uh, other dead files sitting in the background that are not getting used that this accounts for. Um, I just will check as well if it synced the uh, the mute families um, as well. So there's my mute families on there. And yeah, the mute, mute families is the same. So I'd imagine um, if I change them on there and I do a sync, this should reflect that accordingly. There we go. So... Um, that's your introduction, that's my introduction, and uh, 
That's all for this video, signing off.